how can they like, I love the example that you brought for communication to even just start with that. Uh, right? I just like loved how you were bringing that in with your, with your wife. Yeah. Well, communication is really the most powerful way to come back to your female side. And if you don't understand this gender difference that I'm pointing out, which is a biological reality and indisputed, and there's just no question about it. You go to any doctor, you'll see women have a whole different requirement of hormones than men do. And those hormones determine your mood. They determine your preferences, your desires, their needs, your motivations, your happiness, your sorrow, all of that is directly affected by hormones. And what people don't recognize today, and my, my message today helps us to look at this, your situations in your life that you create, the way you communicate, the way you interact, the way you depend on people or let people depend on you determines your hormones. Okay, so you, if you're way on your male side, by simply communicating in a different way, you can come back to your female side. And my experience is that the most powerful way, and I've been doing this 40 years to help women come back to finding a balance of their male side and their female side, it is communication. And particularly a kind of communication where she talks more and men listen more. Ironically, as men, we know now that this plague of, of relationships today is men have lower and lower testosterone levels and women have lower and lower estrogen levels. This is what's keeping us from having polarity. Uh, and there's a lot of distinctions here that I could make, but I'm gonna stick with the most powerful one and accessible to people. And that women, you can train a man to be a good listener. He can't, it's literally up to you to get, to get what you need. Men do not know how to be listeners. We've never been listeners. It's not in our programming to be good listeners. It's in our program to hear a problem as a fire and put it out. And what, so give a solution, interrupt, argue, you know, come back, make her wrong. If you have a problem, it's not a problem. We want to minimize it. We want to push it down or we want to have a bigger problem, all kinds of strategies to get rid of your problems rather than recognizing that women today can solve their problems. What they need is the one problem, which is how to come back to their female side. That will make you happy. Produce estrogen, <laughs> depend on him. So what do you depend on him for if you're better at everything than him? <laughs> which a lot of people, women think they are. I don't know if they always are, but they certainly think they're better. I did a study once on men who wash dishes and so forth, and the women complained in that. The women who said, actually, my husband washes dishes as much as I do, but I have to rewash them because he doesn't do a good job. <laughs> That's called picky, picky, picky. So let, let's get out of picky, 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 come back to love and appreciation and so forth. And, and, so, and how to bring out the best in a man. What you need most from men today, it's like a missing vitamin. So you come to me, I'm a doctor and you're sick. I'm gonna tell you why you're sick. There's a missing vitamin. And you're not gonna know that before. If you knew, you would have done it already. It's not that hard to get it. So you would find out, how do I get that vitamin? But over here, you're thinking, I don't want that vitamin. I don't need that vitamin. And so bottom line, to get that vitamin I'm gonna give you right now, which is how to communicate so that your estrogen levels will go up and a man will listen. How to train him, how to train yourself so estrogen will come up. If you were to do that, it won't seem natural. You know, I'm taking off of something you said in the beginning, which is how do we make changes without feeling like a fake? Uh, it doesn't, it feels like a fake. It will feel like a fake because it's not who you've been for the last 20 years. It's a part of you that you've denied, but it's real. And when you start going there, then it will feel real. Now, it takes willpower. Literally, women are addicted to their male side. They're addicted to complaining about the male men in their lives. That could be picky, picky, picky. Now, let me give you some biological foundation for this. Complaining actually produces huge levels of dopamine. Dopamine is produced quite often the highest when there's danger. And all you have to do when to, to experience danger, which feels good in the brain, it produces dopamine, it becomes addictive is to look at what's wrong with this man, to look at what's wrong with your life. So women are actually addicted to complaining and negative thinking. Just want you to know that. Now you can argue with me, but I have all these reasons. I say, yeah, you do. And you'll find more reasons. The more negative you are, the more negativity you'll get from a man. If you point out to a man his failures, he will fail more. <laughs> complaining begets more complaining and more justification for complaining. 
you got to get out of that mode and come back and realize I have a problem. I'm too demanding. I'm too picky. I'm too shut down. I don't have enough emotion. And when I do have emotion, I'm a little crazy. Okay, that's the other side of it. If you're way on your male side and you come back to your female side, eventually it does happen where you get triggered and a lot of emotion comes up. It comes up as overreactions and justifications for those overreactions. You know, suddenly he's, he's 20 minutes late and he means he doesn't love me. <laughs> he doesn't care about me. Or you've asked him to do something like turn out the lights when he walks through the room and he doesn't do it. And then you feel like he doesn't love you because he doesn't do everything you ask him to do. I mean, we got to like grow up here, be more loving, accepting, more appreciative. But you can't if you don't have estrogen. Let me give you an example of real estrogen production. Let's say you live in a dangerous world and there's no police and you need protection because there's roaming bad animals or bad men who are dangerous or bad women, whatever, and there's danger. And your husband goes and beats somebody up and protects you. Your estrogen levels soar. Why? Because you're now safe. You depended on him. Now, what women have done today, they don't need men to protect them. And we got police, we got armies, we got politicians, we got money, we got lawyers, everything. You can take care of yourself. And Maslow pointed this out. Everybody's heard of Maslow. If you handle the lower needs, which is if you can provide your basic physical security and, surprise, uh, and uh, security and survival, okay? You can feed yourself, you can do the basics, you've got a house, you've got a place to live. What do you need a man for? And if you don't need a man, you won't love men. You can't feel love for men. You have to feel dependent on someone for something significant to produce estrogen. And women need to make 10 times more estrogen than men. Women need to make 20 times more estrogen than men. Double your estrogen to fall in love with a man. How many times did we see in the movies where men did some risky thing, saved a woman's life, and she goes, oh my God, I love him. It's biological. It's biological. And what's interesting is it doesn't have to be 20 times higher all the time. One time, 20 times higher, there's a bond and it doesn't go away. It can slowly go away over time. That's why men have to also bump their testosterone up. You know, and I have ways that will double men's testosterone in a week. And because if I don't double my testosterone occasionally for my wife, then suddenly she doesn't feel that special or that important. So there's a whole dynamic here, what men have to do so as I'm telling women what you're doing wrong and what you have to do, if you want to have a polarity, lasting attraction, fall in love, have a great romantic relationship, along with other wonderful things in your life, often successful women have all these other wonderful things, but they're alone. And, that, and, and that's not the biggest thing. It's one-tenth of what you need, but when it's missing, it wipes out everything else. So you really, really need to have a, a, a whole life can't look to just to a man, but at the same time, without a man, you're missing something, and isn't that too bad? That's how I feel. But hey, it's only you're only missing one tenth of life. Not everybody's perfect. But if you want to create a romantic relationship, a passionate relationship, if you want great sex, if you want orgasms, you have to make some changes, and you have to realize it's not about changing men; it's about changing you. Okay, so how do you change you? Come back from your male side to your female side, communication skills. You have to train the man so that you will become more and more vulnerable in his presence. Now, the first thing for you to actually raise your estrogen is that if you can reveal something about you, that what you think, what you feel, what your emotions are, what your wishes are, what your needs are, what your wants are, that's called your subjective reality. You have objective realities, what happened today, what went on. That's all like superficial. How did that affect you? What's going on inside of you? What are your reactions inside? Okay, that's, if you could reveal that to me, that's called intimacy. That's me going into you. You're revealing to me. And what intimacy is the most intimate is revealing to me what you don't tell anybody at work. So you know that you can't just say everything you feel wherever you are. There's worries, there's fears, there's insecurities, there's embarrassment, there's guilt, there's feelings of inadequacy. You can't reveal any of that if you're a CEO, if you're a successful woman. It's about, and sometimes you don't even know that's within you. I'd say for half of the women listening, you have no idea of the, the wealth of, of insecurities inside yourself that you had to bury to become so confident. 
You know, after somebody's been in therapy, a woman has been in therapy with me for a few weeks, even a few weeks, every session she has, she falls apart and cries. See, that's massive estrogen. When you can actually be that vulnerable and share what you're sad about, what you're afraid of, what's most important to you, and feel the pain that you're pushing down by being so busy on your male side. Because we know addictions are a way we can avoid feeling our true feelings. Well, women are addicted being on their male side. If you're making testosterone, you don't feel your emotions. You push them down. And so half the women on their male side have pushed down their emotions. They don't even know they exist. The other half do have those emotions and they'll come up and they'll be irrational and they'll come up as complaints and irritation and annoyance. And then she'll use those. She'll, she, what she does is these emotions come up and she validates them as I can't be happy unless you change. And then she becomes boss. And then she wants to improve the man, change the man, criticize the man, withhold love because he doesn't change. <laughs> and none of that works. Okay, none of that works. The recognition is how can I use this man not to help me as a woman come back to feeling loving. And the way you come back to feeling loving, I'll give you a model for it, which is what I did for years as a therapist, eight, eight hours a day, women would come in and I would get them to feel safe. Then I would get, ask them questions that bring them deeper into their emotions. They would cry and they would leave my office happy for a week. <laughs> <laughs> everything's fine and then they would come back and their complaints would start bothering and whatever and then they would get in touch with their feelings and then they would feel better stress levels go away life gets better and eventually then i would start to teach them once they learn how to open their heart how to train a man so the first thing you have to learn to do is give up blame recognize that don't believe your feelings that's the first thing. Whenever you're not feeling loving, your feelings are, they're legitimate. That's what you feel. And they're nonsense. They're based upon faulty thinking. Okay. It'd be like, he didn't do this, or he's not doing that, or he does that. Therefore, he doesn't love me. Or he did this, he did this. Therefore, I can't get what I need. I asked for help. He didn't do it. He forgot. I'll never be able to get what I need. This is what our emotional brain does, but we justify it. Our, and the more successful a woman is, the better she is at justifying her feelings. <laughs> and, she, and she has a greater fear of embracing the reality that they're overreactions, that they're projections, that they're displacements. It's all the basics of Freudian psychology that nobody can do anymore because, oh, that doesn't validate the feeling. Oh, it's what I feel must be true. Let me give you an example of that. I saw in the news one time where they were, where uh, one politician was saying to the interviewer that, you know, uh, crime has gone up in Chicago. And the interviewer said, actually, statistically, crime has gone down. And he says, yes, but people feel that crime has gone up. I said, okay, yeah, people feel that crime has gone up, but it hasn't, it actually gone down. And then he says, so crime has gone down. I said, no, 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 crime has gone up because people feel that crime has gone up. No, feelings are wrong. It, it is, but think about it, if you feel my partner doesn't love me, then your stress levels go sky high. Then you start feeling resentful or you start getting into bad habits like overgiving, trying to get love rather than appreciating what is available. You know, the, the, the old story is to appreciate is to appreciate. You know, something my house appreciates in value. It's because I appreciate it. You actually acknowledge what I've received, you will get more. And when you don't appreciate, you get less. But if you appreciate, you will get more. But sometimes along the way, you need to train your partner how to give you more. And the first step, women, is to lower your stress levels using a man. So you come home and you say, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I just want to talk about my day today. It's not a big deal. I don't want you to say anything. I just want to vent how I feel. And I'm only going to do it for like five or 10 minutes. And then I'm going to feel better and come in and get a big hug from you, which I love getting hugs from you. Now, even if you don't believe any of that, you still say it. That's where you fake it till you make it, okay? Because this does not feel natural to women on their male side. It's like if I told a man to do that, an old-fashioned man, he said, well, that's ridiculous. What's the point of talking about my day? I could watch some TV. <laughs> See, talking, what I found with women is when I could make it safe for them, which means I'm not going to try to fix them. Even though they're trying to get me to solve their problem, I'm not going to try to solve their problem. I'm going to, well, before we can solve this problem, I first need to understand what happens and how you feel. So I would listen. I'd ask how they feel. Then I would go deeper into the feeling, to the emotions. 
And generally, if the emotion is disappointment, I would know there's some sadness. If there's some sadness and disappointment, there's some fear. What are your concerns? What are your worries? What are your doubts? And they go deeper. And then I say, well, what are you angry about? Well, oh, I'm not angry. Or some women start out with anger. You see, whenever you have one emotion, you have three others. I'll just say this. See, if I go up to somebody who's angry and I say, you know, you're really just afraid. I'm not afraid. But the reality is you're never going to get angry about something unless you have some insecurity, doubt, or fear. Somebody steals money from me. Let's say I have, uh, somebody takes $1,000 from me, but I've got $10 million. I don't get upset. But if all I've got is $1,000 and you take $1,000, I'm really upset. I might feel really sad or I might feel really angry or I'm, because I'm afraid. What am I going to do? I just lost all my money. Are you kidding? So always our insecurities are behind any stress we feel. And this is what we have to get, women. Whenever you're stressed, you're feeling afraid or concerned. That's the more masculine way to express your fears. You're, whenever you're feeling unhappy, you're also disappointed and you're sad. See, these are vulnerable feelings that you're not going to share in the office, in the workplace. Whenever you're, whenever you're uh, angry, you're also afraid. Or whenever you're afraid, by the way, some women live in this sort of anxiousness. They need to acknowledge the part of them which is angry because it, if, if you're afraid and you can't let go of fear, it's because you're feeling powerless. You need to find your power inside that says, this is wrong, this shouldn't happen to me, and then let go of the anger. So the point is, feel the emotions and let it go. And all you have to do to let it go is just talk about it without trying to use those emotions to change somebody. See, usually when you get angry, you're trying to change somebody. Is it usually when you're sad, you're trying to change them. You want them to give you more, feel more empathy for you. If you're afraid, you're trying to get out of something, you want somebody to do something for you. If you're feeling guilty, it's because you want somebody to you know, recognize you, see you made a mistake, so, so they'll trust you again. All emotions are manipulation. At the same time, we need to embrace it because that's who we are. We're all, <laughs> we're emotional being. Negative emotions are part of a million years of conditioning in the brain. When you're not getting what you want and you're on your female side, negative emotions will come up. But what, what's our goal here? Our goal is to go to the female side. So let the emotions come up, but express them in a way that lowers your stress, not to change somebody, but to change yourself, to let them go. That's the, that's the higher human thing to do. You feel your emotions to become aware of why I'm upset and recognize there's no reason to be upset. Let it go. And that will automatically happen. As a therapist, I watched this. Women would be upset. I'd get more and more in touch with what was bothering them. Instead of like, don't worry about it, no big deal. I said, well, tell me more. Well, help me understand that better. What else? And maybe you also feel this. And maybe you also feel this until they're crying. Then I go, mission accomplished. They feel better. That's the release that has to take place to let go of negative emotions. When you let go of negative emotions, estrogen levels rise. When you hold on to negative emotions, testosterone rises, okay? And then, and then the emotions start to be, go down as you busy yourself ignoring your emotions. So how do you let go of them? You have to be able to feel your negative emotions in the presence of someone that you're not trying to change. See, if you use hurt, for example, one of the most primitive emotions, and never ever should you tell your husband, oh, I feel hurt. What is he gonna, what's his reaction to that going to be? He totally fail you. His job is to protect you. It's the worst insult you can give to a man is you hurt me. But it's your primitive brains telling you that. So that's something you would process with, a, with yourself or somebody else. Those are your deeper, really crazy emotions that he just hurt you because he ignored you. It hurts my feelings. That's called taking it personally. Now, for a child, that's appropriate. They haven't yet developed the front part of the brain. They're not yet grown-ups, but you're a grown-up. So when you go into, I feel hurt, you're basically being like a little six-year-old girl or 10-year-old girl. Okay, that's taking things so personally. We're supposed to outgrow that. We don't, but you don't throw that on him unless you take 100% responsibility for it. And that's what you can learn to do. But you have to realize that if you're doing it to change him, it won't work. It doesn't release. So when women are in my therapy session, I want to get them to those more primitive emotions. They're, they're underlying it all as deep feelings of insecurity and adequacy, unworthiness. You know, the woman that says, I deserve, I am woman, deep down inside, she feels so unworthy that she's so upset. See, 
anytime you have a negative emotion, a part of you feels that, well, unless you change, I'll never get what I need. But if you feel like, hey, I'm so worthy of love and support, you don't like me, so what? You know, I, I watched all of the, you know, I have a Facebook Live thing and I get some trolls on there and they, they'll say the most awful things. And when I was a younger guy, I go, oh, oh, I'd be hurt by that. You know, nobody, I just put myself out there. You didn't love me. And now I don't need their approval. I'm not, I don't depend on them for anything. So I feel good about myself. So whatever they do, they can shoot me the bird. That's your problem, not mine. But at the same time, I'm also feeling empathy and compassion. Boy, you've had some really bad experiences in life. Too bad for you. But I'm not interested anymore in helping them. I put my attention towards people that like me and appreciate me. <laughs> so I'm a happy guy. And there's plenty of people that will love me and accept me just as I am. I don't have to convince somebody. So this is the most important thing for women. Don't try to convince a man to love you. The problem is women who are more on their male side will tend to be the masculine side pursues. So you're gonna see some guy and you're gonna to try to pursue him. And whenever you pursue a man, he's not interested in you. Just to know, he won't be interested in you. You wanna start practicing these new skills with men that you're not interested in that much, but who are more interested in you. Because if a man's more interested in you, then you don't depend on his approval or his caring or whatever, although he's gonna give it to you, but you don't depend on it. So your unconscious, bad tendencies won't come up. You see, there's this, all these monkey behaviors that when we feel threatened, come up and control us. And for women today, it makes them more masculine. But be with a man who actually is more interested in you than you're interested in him. And ideally someone you feel no sexual attraction for, but you feel safe with. And you practice these skills to bring out the best in him by helping him be more masculine. And you get to try out being feminine because you're gonna be afraid, you're gonna look weak, you're gonna be undesirable, you're gonna be seen as, as negative, needy, and actually he'll like you more and you'll begin to experience a new part of you that's worthy of love without having to earn it. See, without having to earn it. You shouldn't ever have to earn a man's love and there's plenty of men that will love you just the way you are, but you're not gonna find them or allow them to come forth unless you train them to see that part of you. He has to experience it. You have to experience it before any of this becomes real. So the beginning process is here I saw these women coming in and they could share their emotions with me and feel better afterwards because they weren't trying to change me. See, but if they share those with their husbands, they'd be trying to change their husbands and it doesn't release that way. So you have to say, and a man can't hear you if you're trying to change him with your emotions. He'll just feel controlled and manipulated because <laughs> you are. So, so let's, <laughs> you, let's just look at reality. You know, so, so what you do is you say to your husband about things that your stress, think of stress as a ball. And inside that ball of stress is some feelings of frustration, some feelings of disappointment, some concerns and worries, some feelings of embarrassment. Those are the four basic colors of emotion, those four things. So you come to this relationship or you're on a date or say you're with a guy, whatever. And you say, it's such a joy to be with you. And I just wanna decompress from the day. I'm gonna talk about some things. Really, I don't want you to say anything. You don't have to fix anything. Just listen and I'll feel so much better and we'll change the subject. That's it, that's on a date. But you would do this uh, uh, in a relationship. You you'd Afterwards you say, oh, you're going for the hugs. Oh, thank you, that felt so good. Cause you will soften if you can express your emotions. And that softening is estrogen. And when you soften, you produce pheromones that increase men's testosterone, and he starts to like you more. And you bring out the male side of him. Because if you're a, a, a strong woman, you will tend to attract sensitive guys. It, opposites attract. So what you have to know is that that sensitive guy, he could have a strong male inside of him that you can bring out as you go to the soft feminine inside. You have to do your change inside yourself. But I want a man who'll make me feel like a woman. No, you have to feel like a woman to attract a man who will make you feel more like a woman. Okay, I'll say that again, I like that one. I hear from, I want, I want a real alpha man. Women come up to me and they say, I want a man like you, you know, confident, successful, hardworking, you know, doesn't get upset about stuff. I mean, that's what I want. Make me feel like a woman. I go, yeah, you have to first feel like a woman before that man's interested in you. 
He's not interested in you at all. And A, the second thing is that man doesn't exist even for you until you find the woman inside. Then the man will come to you who will be able to provide. And he doesn't have to be that big alpha male either. He could be this really kind, generous man and a safe man, not dangerous man, not self-centered man, not playboy man, but a man who actually could provide the support you need. And if you become more feminine in his presence, rather than becoming like his mother to improve him, but you become more feminine inside, then you'll get so sexually turned on to him and you'll be multi-orgasmic to him. But prior to that, you would only feel sexual attraction to the man who really can't give you what you need. Because see, if you, <laughs> this is what happens to women all the time, <laughs> is that I, they say, I, I, I have these men that I'm attracted to, then they don't call back, they don't want to be with me. And I said, yeah, that's because you're on your male side, you have sex right away, and you become like a man. He doesn't want a man, he wants a woman. And so he will be disgusted with you, he will not like you. I mean, it is reality, this is man talk here. If I can have sex with a woman right away, I like myself more when I'm with her, but not her. <laughs> I feel like, oh, look at me, look what I did, and it's on to my next conquest. You know, men, they need to feel I earned your love, and you need to feel he earned your love. But if you're trying to win a man over, you're on your male side. You need to let him win you over. You need to let him help you feel better. So what you want to do on your dates, because I presume lots of the women are single, but not all, is on your dates, you want to make sure that you do not ask more questions. Do seek to please him. Don't be hard to please, but don't make it so easy that you're pretending to be happy until he does stuff for you. He should pay for the date. He should plan the date. He should talk less than you. You should ask less questions of him. I mean, you're not heartless when he talks. You go, oh, well, that's a good idea, and then come back to you. And well, that makes sense to me. These are things that bump up his testosterone. Good idea, that makes sense. Oh, I'm having a good time. I so much enjoyed this concert. You see, when you say, I so much enjoyed this concert, he feels he is the concert. You, you don't have to thank him, thank the, and the concert. And he goes, yes, I brought you to the concert. I picked it out. You know, if you control the whole thing and you pick it all out and you do everything, he doesn't get to take credit. Masculinity wants to take credit for the woman's happiness. And you have to find your happy place inside of you. And I guarantee you that as you start becoming more vulnerable and can open up and share what's inside that you wouldn't share at work, that means, that means undressing yourself emotionally. And you're not going to do that until you feel safe. So you have to go slow with this whole thing, get to know somebody, get them to do things for you, have conversations with him. In the beginning, have conversations where you disagree with this point of view and show him that you can actually have a completely different point of view and not have any, any need to change his point of view. See, that's the most exciting thing. That's polarity is you think differently, he thinks differently, but you're not trying to change him. You're not trying to convince him. You have to take away any part of you that's trying to convince him, change him, and see what he can provide for you. And let that stimulate you. Differences is what creates attraction. They need to harmonize. Differences only create conflict when we make the other person wrong. We want to change them, or what women often want to do is improve him. He's good enough just the way he is, and if you try to improve him, he'll smell it. But if you use him to make you improve, see, use him, he's now successful, and you'll bring out the best part of him. But it's indirect. It's using him to make you happier. That makes him feel stronger, and he will grow in his masculinity. Oh, wow. Like, what, what a great concept, you know, just really. And I love really this idea of leaning into the insecurities. One thing I always say, be secure in your insecurities. Look like if you're anxious or aggravated, is it actually more panic underneath, right? Like you called it fear, but I like when it's like, when it's like intensified fear, it's like almost like panic. Because that was my breakthrough with my husband was actually saying, my husband's like, well, there's got to be something else. It can't be just the rage. What's, what's underneath that? And I was like, panic, like so yeah. much panic. And, and, but the thing is like, most women, they don't have access to that. So it's like, it's not that they don't want to have access to it, but they, they, they don't even know. They have no idea. No. And that panic, I would use the emotion name is panic's good, but also scared. See, it's as I'm scared. It's so interesting when Bonnie, uh, the first time I, she showed that part of me, uh, 
part of her to me. It made me feel so strong as a man wanting to protect her. Mm. You see, it brings out the best in men when women can reveal their vulnerability when she said she was scared. It's an interesting story. I, I, you know, I, here I am, you know, I'd been a monk for nine years. And so I'd only been out in the world maybe three years before I was married to Bonnie. And so I was just getting myself grounded into the world where you make money, making just enough. But I wanted to provide the best for her. So I, you know, I had a house in the Pacific Palisades. I was renting it and I didn't know how I was going to pay the rent, but I was busy counseling every day and teaching my classes and so forth. And then she, uh, but she was being the dutiful wife, you know, always trying to be positive, trying to be positive and which was sweet. Okay. Trying to be positive and put on a nice smile. And I was really overworking, coming home really tired. But I would notice I felt good when I was working, but I come home, I'd, I'd suddenly start to feel anxiety. And I'm like, where'd this come from? And, you know, this, this, this restlessness inside of me. And what I understand is when you connect with your partner, if you're a man, if she's not dealing with her emotions, he'll feel them as a part of him. You see, we have these mirror cells. So if you have emotions coming up and you're not revealing it's coming from me, his body will take it on and think it's him because we have these mirror cells. That's why when a woman is happy, it makes a man feel happy and successful, okay? That's why your happiness is everything to a man, the mirror cells, and they don't always work both ways. If I'm happy, it doesn't necessarily make my wife happy, okay? That's just the reality of it. <laughs> it just is one way, you know? <laughs> it's only one way, but when she has fear, and I suddenly have, I can mirror that, and I don't even know where it's coming from, I would feel this anxiety. So I said to her, I said, now honey, I know that I, I'm thinking I, I have all this fear come up when I come home and maybe you're also feeling fear. Are you any insecurities? She, she's going, no, 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 no. I, I trust you. You're my husband. I believe in you. And, and I said, yeah, I know all that. And I love you for that and so forth. And it's okay if you also have other feelings inside because negative emotions, if you feel them, they'll go away. You just have to acknowledge them and let it go. And she said, no, 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 I only have feelings of love for you. You're just amazing. I know how hard you're working for the family. I don't want to be negative at all. And I had to convince her. I said, look, so that's a good preference. I love you just the way you are. And I also have these motions inside and I can share them. Is that okay? I said, so I'm saying it's okay. And so what she said is, okay, well, I do have some fears. I'm scared inside. And I said, okay, well, what is it? And she said, I'm scared that I married the wrong man. <laughs> She said, I said, okay, I didn't expect that one. And then, no. she said, and then she said, I mean, it was brutal truth. And she said, I'm scared that we're not going to be able to afford this house. I'm scared that, you know, we're going to run out of money. And I'm scared that you're not ready to get married. You need to get your feet in the world more. I mean, I love and adore you, but I'm scared. Maybe we did this too soon. I'm depending on you. And, and, and that moment I said, thank you so much for telling you how you feel. I get it. I get it. I want to reassure you, you marry the right guy. I've got this under control, I can do it, and I know I can do it. And then I, she says, oh, I love you. And we gave a hug. So we didn't give a lot of reality, we just acknowledged those feelings were there. I, all my anxiety went away. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, and, and I felt more motivated, I had more energy and so forth, because when women push down their emotions, it just makes men more feminine. Men need to feel masculine, and it's when you're in your emotions. There's nothing more estrogen stimulating than being in vulnerable emotions. Now also happiness is also a vulnerable emotion. If you're in touch with your emotions, being happy, but if your happiness is covering up negative emotions, you actually make men sleepy, you make them tired, you make them passive, you make them irritable, you make them grumpy, because when men go to their female side, they become tired, grumpy, irritable, angry, pouty, all kinds of the worst qualities, even, even aggression when these crazy men become mean, that's all high estrogen in men because part of it is they're not managing their testosterone, of course, but also she's not managing her estrogen. It always takes two people to create these problems. Without this knowledge, it always looks like somebody's a big victim. Actually, both people always feel like they're victims. Oh, wow. I, I think that's like the, the truth bomb that was just dropped the truth bomb of the day. We were like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I think like the women are just thinking they have a whole different reality on perceiving now. <laughs> I can already feel it. Um, on, what you did in your marriage where you were able to share that panic. Take yeah. a moment to let other women know. I mean, it affected him in a positive way, didn't it? 
yeah, actually he was slightly depressed before and I didn't understand why. And he didn't even understand why, you know, he's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going through something. And I'm like, okay, like, what? I don't know. Cause I always look at what's inauthentic in the entire relationship. So I was necessarily thinking about me, but I'm like, well, if there was something, so you're absolutely right. Actually now, now that I connect the dots, which I never connected before, I'm like, you're right. This whole thing disappeared after, after I was talking about the whole panic and the whole. It's so amazing what women owning their femininity makes men men. And I'll say the other side, if I was talking to men, I'd say men own your masculinity and you'll help her find her feminine. Mm -hmm. So what would it look like for a man who owns his masculinity? It would mean that anytime he's starting to feel negative emotion, he would detach and do something without depending on her or giving to her do something on his own to be happy and fulfilled, to bump up his testosterone. That's why men from Mars talked about the cave, which is so important, is the cave, when men withdraw, allows them to rebuild their testosterone. I tell men to stop complaining. You will never hear me say a complaint out my mouth. That's feminine. I don't complain. It's so powerful. I don't get angry. My wife, she said to me, you know, and, and I know you read my introduction from uh, my website, it, it, older version of it, but actually my wife passed two years ago and I'm sort of through the major grieving part of it. So uh, be with me for a moment as I acknowledge that. So she passed and I'm going through this thing, but when she was alive, 34 years, we're married, 40 years together, around 23 years, I asked her, honey, how do you rate me as a husband feeling very confident in myself? And she said, honey, as a, as a father to our children, I can't imagine a better man. As a husband, you're not perfect. <laughs> but she said, but you've given me the greatest gift any woman could want. And I said, what's that? She says, I know I can say things. I can express myself, my feelings, and it upsets you. And you start to get angry. And every time you start to feel angry, you stop talking. You go to your cave and you don't come out until you're ready. And when you come out, you always have more love for me. I've seen it over and over. I've even done things to see if I can upset you. And you get upset, you go, and you always come back with more love because that's how you grow in love. You only grow in love by being challenged. Mm. And what I teach men is if you complain or whine to hurt, you destroy your relationship. And it's okay when you go to your cave, if your mind is filled with she did this, she did that, but know that that's your nonsense and stop. Just go stop, stop, stop. It doesn't help you and it doesn't help her. Mm -hmm. Do something to make you feel good. Temporarily forget what upset you, then feel better. Cause all you have to do as a man is raise your testosterone and all those emotions go away. Mm -hmm. See women, you raise your testosterone and you're on your male side and you're feeling incomplete and empty. Okay, you can push emotions away by busy, 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 but then you're stressed, more stressed because you're not, you're out of balance. But for a man, all we have to do is go over to our male side, pump up our testosterone, then we're not plagued by all this negative emotion stuff. Mm -hmm. And so what we then do is then reflect on what happened, look at what she did wrong and never tell her. That's not your job. Do you want her telling you what you're wrong? No, so don't tell her. So don't tell her. After you look at how she contributed to the problem, you look at how you created the problem. And then you go back and you apologize for your side of it and give more love. And that built trust. And then when women feel trust, what then happens is this hormone oxytocin gets produced in their body. And this is extremely important for women as they get older. Safety. And not safety in terms of my... my I have survival and security, but it's safety, emotional safety to reveal, to become naked emotionally is the most important thing to come back to your female side. So to feel safe happens over time, the good communication skills, where she felt so much safety knowing nothing she could do would push me out of her life. And that's what she told me. So, you know, I'm a happy woman. Well, what that does is that produces oxytocin. Oxytocin is safety. Now, when a woman has oxytocin, and only then can her estrogen levels go up. So the precursor to having high estrogen is feeling oxytocin. So they go hand in hand. Uh, estrogen says, I can depend on you. I need help. I get help.
but oxytocin says it's safe for me to ask for help, that I am loved. And oxytocin is very important. Oxytocin is very important for great sex. And basically all orgasmic potential is super high estrogen. When a woman orgasms, she doubles her estrogen levels. And she can't double her estrogen levels without oxytocin. Oxytocin is stimulated by feeling safe, one. Oxytocin is stimulated as well by physical non-sexual touch. That's why women need their whole bodies touched. They need to be kissed. They need to have their hair touched. They need their whole body gently touched until she starts feeling more sexual. When she feels more sexual, that's because her estrogen is now increasing over the normal levels of healthy estrogen. So healthy estrogen is around the realm of 10 times more estrogen than a man would have. Mm. Now it's starting to go into this other category of higher estrogen, then non-sexual touch becomes sexual. And then she can start going to the higher levels where she can experience her orgasmic potential. And, and you know, half the women have never had an orgasm, which is really, how do you keep a relationship together if she's not having orgasms, it doesn't happen. Now, I don't wanna put pressure on women to always have an orgasm because it depends where she is and her stress level, whether she can have it. But a man needs to feel bonded with a woman, experience at least once a month, her full-blown orgasm. That will keep him bonded to her because it raises his testosterone so high, if not every week, okay? But it's, it, it's it, it's unfortunate that couples don't have good sexual skills. A woman can't find that high estrogen level unless he has good sexual skills and takes the time. But once again, you can train a man. It just simply is, oh, this feels so good, slow, slow. Oh, this feels so good, slow, slow. Move his hands where you want them to go. <laughs> There's so much control that you can do without controlling a man. Just like when you want to talk to him about your feelings, you say, these are some of the magic words. These are million dollar phrases I'm going to reveal to you now. I just want to talk about what happened yesterday. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. As soon mm -hmm. as you say it's not a big deal, a man's stress level goes down and he can start to hear what you have to say. Oh, so ladies, keep that in mind. So, go ahead. I just need to talk about this for a few minutes. Awesome. Lower his yeah. stress. I love that. I love that so much. I could, I could talk about this forever. And I'm so excited to have you had you on here today. Uh, Dr. John Gray, I know you just said already in the beginning, you know, there's so many aspects, we can only touch on so much. So maybe we can do it again. Yeah, but we thank can you do it again. But let me finish that one thought very quickly. It's yeah, not a big deal. I just need to talk about my feelings for a few minutes, and then I'll feel good. Please don't say anything. You don't have to do anything about it. I just like to inform you what's going on inside of me. It makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. And then if you share some emotions and, you know, when you said that or did that, it hurt my feelings, you could do it then. When you went in the past, when you did this, it hurt my feelings. I felt this and this. And that's because it triggered unresolved feelings from my past. You know, when I was a little girl, I always felt left out and those feelings just come up. And so I tend to overreact. You want a million dollars, say to a man, I tend to overreact, I'm sorry. You know what he'll do? He'll bow before you and say, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Take 100% responsibility. You know, these are feelings from my past and I'm so sorry because I must have sound so critical. Uh, oh, no, it's okay, honey, I love you, I'll do what you need. And no, no, you don't have to do anything. The less you try to change him, the more he changes to be there for you. The less importance you give to your negative emotions, the more importance he'll give them to you. This is understanding how you can transform a relationship to magic. I, I love that, ladies. I hope you're taking lots of notes. You can, of course, rewind the video as well, because I will have to do that for sure uh, and write all of that down. So thank you so much for being here today, uh, Dr. John Gray. It was such a pleasure to delve into your wisdom you know so much i mean so much to learn so many aha moments you know so many insights and of course for the women who are more interested in working with you we'll put all the links below um to all the books so do you have anything else special any a course or anything else well i have a free course you go to the front page of marsvenus.com right, yeah. and it's how to get everything you want in your relationship a course for single women and a course for women who are in relationships a course for single men and of course, for men who are in relationships, fantastic course. And then I have uh, so many video blogs, myself and my daughter, Lauren. My daughter, Lauren, she teaches a class for women 
on basically how to balance your hormones inside, how to make sure that you're coming back to your female side. She calls it how to get me time. And me time is how to give yourself the kind of support that will raise your hormones rather than get the support that pushes you in the other direction. So that's a course she teaches there. I also have uh, over 32 different blogs on just how, on wellness. People don't realize, but 30, 20 years ago, I had early stage Parkinson's and learned how to reverse that with natural supplements and then found for the basic things, not big diseases or anything, but I give videos on how you can sleep better, balance your blood sugar, have more energy, balance your hormones, detoxify your body, increase your mental focus, relax your brain, produce serotonin, improve digestion, improve gut function. All those things can easily be happened within a few weeks, if months, and sometimes the next day with some of the suggestions that I give, along with lowering your blood pressure and losing weight. These are things that I've become an expert at over the last 20 years when I was able to heal my brain of Parkinson's. I had to research and learn a lot. I opened a clinic I learned all these things and so I just keep it to the simple. Those are the simple things and there's solutions for it as opposed to taking drugs. Cause anytime you take a drug, you're suppressing symptoms and not healing. So how do we heal and healthy body, healthy brain, healthy relationships. We need to learn new skills and techniques. Awesome. 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 So great. So all the links for that ladies will be right in the comment section. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Jean Gray. What a pleasure to have you. And for the ladies, I will talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.